Today's video is on why you should really consider using CAD in your uh, van design build. Um, about a week and a half ago, it snowed here in Las Vegas, and right now it's raining. It hasn't been the, the most ideal environment for me to build, especially since the first thing I have to do is paint the inside of the van, and then I'm going to be using a lot of glue, and it's cold and miserable, and I don't know why I'm standing here outside, but I am. But anyway, um, what I want to impress on you is that, you know, a week and a half ago, I, I, I figured out that I wasn't going to be able to go any further in doing physical work. And so I really started looking at my design again and getting down into the nitty gritty and detail of it. And I want to show you why you should really consider using uh, a CAD program. Now, I use AutoCAD and it, it isn't that I'm wealthy. Uh, AutoCAD is pretty expensive, but um, I, I also teach uh, online actually at a uh, university. And uh, as a result, I have access to an academic uh, license for AutoCAD, so it doesn't cost me anything. But the point is there are lots of cheap, inexpensive 3D uh, CAD programs out there and I really encourage you to uh, use them. The reason is because um, it really helps you envision just where everything is going to be in the van. And what you start realizing as you, as you start relating what's in the van to what's on your CAD drawing is that there are inconsistencies because nobody is good enough with a CAD program that they can model all of the curves and nooks and crannies of the van. But what you can do is you can look out for some major obstacles in the van and you can design around those and you can, you can uh, make sure that everything is square for your design and if you make a tweak here you see how it affects all the other systems now if you don't do that if you sort of you know a certain amount of it is going to be seat of the pants make it fit but you want to try to minimize that as much as possible and the more work you do in the design end of it the less difficulty you're going to have in actually implementing your design um, one of the things that really impresses me is on the the interaction and the interrelated interrelatability of all of the systems you know the heating system the insulation the electrical the um the spatial challenge of working in such a small space you make one change and then it encroaches on something else and um you know uh, there are lots of things that you did not you don't anticipate as determining your design you know becoming sort of the bottlenecks in your design those things that prevent you from doing something else or that force you into another choice you know for example uh, one of the things that i was looking at was a microwave and i ultimately decided the microwave that i had chosen was just too darn big you know so i had to find a smaller one and um there are lots of things like this so what i want to do is is impress on you in this video the importance of being able to model your system and it, it, it gets even more important the more detailed you get so um, I hope you enjoy it. If you do like it, uh, please uh, give me a, a like and, uh, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot. When I first started thinking about the design of my van conversion, I really thought about you know, all of the stuff that I wanted to put in a very small space. And I knew that I needed to find, well, the prices of all that stuff. I needed to find out the dimensions of all that stuff and I needed to just keep looking you know through various vid videos YouTube and otherwise to find all of the the stuff that I might possibly need so I started accumulating this list of all of the equipment with the dimensions and probably the redeeming value of the uh, the CAD exercise, at least in the first place, was to try to place the equipment in, you know, the proper location inside the inside the van. So this was my first attempt, and um, I, I guess the uh, the best thing about this is that these shapes, these two D shapes actually represent a, a first approximation of the equipment that I was going to try to stuff into this thing. Now, with the exception of this is a wheel well, and this is a wee well, wheel well, and this is, this is my water system here. This is my, what's in the red is my stove system with the propane heater, and then I've got the bed and the couch and the, 
the batteries are down here and, and it, of course this doesn't mean much to anybody except me and this is a, a table that I was placing initially but at least you know these items represented the right size so I could see kind of what I was able to put inside the van. Now my next iteration of this uh, design I, re I recognize that once I got a, a better sense of the dimensions of all of this stuff that for one thing my bed was going to have to extend the full length of the cab and um, and then I, I also moved my batteries around and I, I made a few other changes and uh, at that point I actually got the van and I realized that now I could start relating the actual um, dimensions of the van to the equipment and then I graduated to a 3D model. Now the 3D model here, I uh, I identified a couch and for example this is a microwave, this is my figure. I, I actually drew this figure with my approximate dimensions. I've got a refrigerator here with the lid open and the stove and uh, then over here is my sink and I thought that I might like to have a Berkey water filter, you know, that I was going to have to locate someplace. Um, I did recognize, one of the big things that I recognized was that these wheel wells were not the same size. They're different. And so I had to deal with that. And at this point, um, I thought, well, now I need to start getting down into the nitty gritty of actually designing, you know, what, what this stuff is going to, uh, s reside in, you know, for example, the cabinet that's going to hold the stove and the water, the sink and the Berkey filter and, you know, the microwave and uh, get more detail on this, um, this uh, couch here. And then underneath here is all my electrical stuff, you know, so for example, let me turn off the, uh, the couch. So this is represent, uh, you know, my inverter and, and my batteries and some other stuff here. Well, so I worked on, on, in this for quite a while. And, uh, and then about a week and a half ago, um, it snowed here. And I decided that, well, I better get serious because uh, I wasn't able to start working immediately uh, in the garage. It was too cold. So I decided to refine my CAD system. And, and I'm really glad that I had this delay because it forced me into really thinking about the design in, in great detail. And then I discovered the true value of, of you know, all of this work in converting this to CAD, all of these ideas to CAD. Because at this point, and let me just show you the latest iteration. This is what it looks like. At this point, I've got, for example, I've got uh, uh, cabinets, you know, on top and below, and I've got the, let me turn off the couch again here. I've got the, really the, what the bed is going to look like. This is all made with aluminum. And I was able to place all of the slats and figure out exactly how many I'm going to need and where they're going to be placed. And similarly with the um, the cabinets and the and the refrigerator. Now I'm going to go through all of these in in detail to show you sort of what I discovered. But there are some things about this. For example, you know this cabinet doesn't go all the way to the roof and that's because there's there's a trough that extends the the length of the cab or the length of the cargo area of, of the van on both sides and also you, you may notice that there's nothing in this little corner here and nothing in this corner and that's because there's a channel that goes up there so at this point i'm able to start really relating the the curvature and all of the anomalies associated with the van to the CAD drawing. And those things force me to make changes in the CAD drawing. And when I, when I reflect those in the CAD drawing, they, they impact other systems. So that, 
you know, I have things running into each other that uh, I didn't anticipate, so I have to change the dimensions. And, you know, if you're doing this with paper, with your do if you're trying to build a scale model, for example, I mean, it's a heck of a lot of work to change the dimensions of this bed or to change, you know, some of the members of this cabinets or the, or the, uh, whatever is holding the, uh, the sink and the stove. Whereas if it's in CAD, it's, it's a relatively easy thing to just change everything um, very quickly. And that's when you really start to see the value of having this in, in CAD. So with this, let me, let me turn off everything and start talking about some of the nitty-gritty details associated with the ProMaster City that I think will be of value to people who have a ProMaster City, maybe of value to other people with a mini cargo van, not too sure. So... Let me turn all these all this stuff off. This is the basic floor plan, and believe it or not, just this little bit represents a whole heck of a lot of work. I don't know how many times I crawled underneath that van. I feel like I know the underneath of this van, um, you know, like the back of my hand, even though it's not shown here. There's, you know, all kinds of stuff located under here. There's a gas tank and um, the axles and the drivetrain and the exhaust system and the tailpipes and everything else. And my task was to try to find a place where I could basically drill holes in the floor. All right, so for example, over here is a hole that is, uh, I'm going to punch in order to ventilate my refrigerator. This is the hole that's going to ventilate my electrical equipment. Over here is a hole which is I'm going to use to um, provide uh, 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 input and output for my heater, which uses uh, external air and then a heat exchanger to pump heat into the cabin. And believe it or not, you know, just locating, uh, the, there are very few places, it seems to me, where you can have these holes. And so those holes determine in large part exactly where that equipment is going to be located as well. Uh, the other thing that's really important is to get a pretty accurate representation of these wheel wells because everything is referenced to the wheel wells, you know, in this uh, in this cab. So let's start turning a few things on one at a time. Um, first thing might be uh, the windows. All right. So for example, um, it, it's important to know what's going to be in front of windows or not in front of windows. Now, I don't have any windows in the van, but I'm thinking of possibly putting a window in over here so I don't want something to obstruct the window on this side over this on this side I don't really care but I need to have a reference for it so you know and and this is this is done um, you know based on actual dimensions in of the van so I'm not just blue skying this so these things are meaningful next thing let's take a look at uh, well, um, let's look at the bed frame. All right. So this is the bed frame, and this is going to be a standard slide-out type of a bed. Now, the tricky part of this is the fact that I've got this wheel well that I have to accommodate. So this is the stationary part of the bed. And then this part of it pulls out. And uh, believe it or not, you know, this is uh, pretty tricky, you know, I could, because I wanted a minimum width of this so that I could sleep on it in a pinch without sliding it out and it would be a comfortable couch. But the dimensions have to line up exactly right in order to uh, make these cushions work out. And one of the complications here was that um, initially my thought of a bed looked something like this where you see that um, I've got slats here and uh, what's holding them together are horizontal uh, uh, stab bars, aluminum stab. You know, one of the unique things about this whole design is it's all being created with aluminum. And this was looked to me like it was going to be pretty straightforward to do this, but the dimensions are such that I really couldn't tolerate these these uh, these stabs being horizontal. They need to be vertical because this is wasted space. You know, if you pull this all the way out, you've got a couple of inches here, which is wasted 
because of the overlap. And um, believe it or not, that's enough to really bollocks up the design. Not something that you would recognize until you actually really uh, go into the thing in detail and start placing all of the stuff, you know, very accurately in order to see that. Okay, so for example, this is what it looks like here. Now, when I put the cushions on, that's what it's going to look like. Okay, and so the idea here is that um, when I want to turn this into a couch, I'll take this piece here. I'll I'll just lift it up lift up this piece, rotate it up, slide this cushion over, and then push the bed in so that it looks like, let me turn off the, uh, the bed and the bed frame, turn on the couch frame, so that's what the couch frame looks like where everything is pushed in, okay, and it's a pretty solid bed there, right? And then when I turn on the couch, it looks like this. All right. Okay, so this is all being done trying to keep in mind that I want to keep this, I want to keep it as wide as possible without encroaching on this other space over here. Right? So it's a uh, sort of a jigsaw puzzle doing this whole thing. Um, the next complication and this was a fairly complication is this refrigerator all right I decided what fridge I wanted and it's a fairly big fridge as you might be able to see here in relating it and then th one of the the challenges here was first it covered my hole so I was going to have to raise it up a little bit so it's going to be elevated a little bit above the floor so I can have flow underneath the fridge. The, the input vent is on this side. The output is right there. So I want, need to be able to channel this air into the input of this fridge. And then also I want to be able to lift up that lid and then have cabinets on top. Okay, so the, the cabinets have to be sized in order to fit the, the fridge. Now, uh, at one point I had a microwave up here and it was just way too big and I wasn't going to be able to do it. Um, and I know that because I was able to put on the roof, okay, a realistic uh, representation of the roof. So I know kind of what the clearances that I've got here. These are the slats of the roof where I'm going to be running uh, bars across here to attach my upper cabinets. And also to the side as well. Now, again, this ignores the curvature of the van. There, the curvature is going to come down something like this, and it's not something I can represent in CAD. It's something that I can take advantage of with my cabinets, etc., and use the space behind it as best I can, but I can't really incorporate that into my design, at least at this point. You know, maybe as I'm putting this stuff in the, in the cab, I'll see opportunities to grab a few inches here or there but at this point this is a conservative design using straight um, you know straight planes uh, and uh, but it does assume for example I'm going to have a half inch this it's going to have a half inch cocoon of insulation so there's going to be a half an inch on the floor half an inch on the ceiling half an inch on each side of, of fo foam insulation foam board insulation and then uh, in addition to that, as I've mentioned in earlier videos, I'm, uh, my first step is to spray uh, a ceramic paint all in the inside of this, which gives you some delta temperature, you know, just due to the ceramic paint. So the refrigerator tended to be one of the um, disturbing influences uh, on the design of the, of the, ca of the, uh, the van here. Let me uh, turn off this roof here because it just kind of gets in the way of seeing everything else. All right, so we got the fridge in there, and then uh, the next thing is uh, the microwave. Now, initially, I put the microwave on this side. It was too big. There was no way I was going to be able to open the 
the uh, the lid of the refrigerator, I did not particularly want to put the refrigerator on a drawer system and pull it out because this is such a small space. Um, you know, you really it isn't so easy to do that. I mean, this is probably 14, 15 inches across here. This and this is one of the dimensions that has me the most nervous. I'm hoping that I'll be able to slide that refrigerator a little bit over. Um, in order to get a, little, a few more inches, but in any case, um, I decided on a different microwave in order to reduce the size. Now look at the the window over here. Now the couch is going to cover the window to a certain degree, um, which is not ideal, but there's not much I could do about that, I don't think. So that's what I've got there. Next thing was uh, next biggest challenge was uh, actually the uh, propane tank because most pro propane tanks are really quite tall, especially if you want to get a 20-gallon one. Um, I was able to find one that I could tuck underneath the bed here, and uh, it was only uh, 12 inches tall, but I was going to have to, I'm going to have to cut out uh, a little bit from the floor. I'm going to have to sink it down into the floor. I'm going to have a half inch of plywood on here and then a half inch of foam insulation so I can sink this down quite a bit right into the floor if I have uh, uh, issues with the, how high it is. But even, even then, getting this um, mini propane tank, it uh, forced me into a four and a half gallon tank, which is not as big as I would like, but I guess I'm going to have to uh, live with that because there really there was absolutely no other place that I could get a taller tank. And you'll see that in a second when I start turning on a few other things. Let's turn on the um, um, where the stove is going to be. The stove is going to be located right there and it's going to be put inside a stove rack. Now this is, this is probably the most complicated piece in the whole design. Um, and, and let me get rid of the, uh, okay, that's better. Now we can see the stove. And w what this has got, it's got a space for the stove itself. This is a two burner Coleman stove with the lid up so that I can make sure that I've got clearance for the lid. And then there are actually sides that come up, uh, that swing out here. The wings swing out. Um, over here, there's going to be a small drawer, cutlery drawer, you know, right in front of the stove, uh, at least part of the way, um, because the controls of the stove are right there. So I'm going to be able, to, I'm going to have to reach in here to, for the controls of the stove, and then I'll have a small drawer, you know, which is halfway, uh, you know, maybe three quarters of this span here, which is going to be a drawer. And then on top is going to be a cutting board, which will sit on top of these little angle pieces here. Uh, underneath that will be a another drawer here, in addition to this cutlery drawer on top. And then I will have another shelf or drawer, probably just a shelf for a box or something, you know, located in, in this place. Now, one of the things that is important is I didn't want a vertical piece between the stove part of the rack and the water part of the rack. Let me show that because that's where the sink is going to sit. Okay, so I wanted to be able to put my knees underneath this thing uh, so I could lean over into the sink and I could also work on, on the stove and, and do my cutting there, etc. Now you'll notice that there's not, there's precious little uh, counter space in this design, but I'll show you in a little bit how I'm compensating for that using a table. And then to show just how I fit into this thing, let's just turn on a person to see, you know, sort of the clearances here. So I, th I think there's going to be enough room for my knees. 
and uh, I'm hoping that if this goes together well that this will um, I'll be able to function pretty well you know in this small space okay let me turn let me turn on the couch back on so you can see you know how tight it is and there's not a lot of space between the couch and this other equipment but there can't be if you're going to have any kind of reasonably sized um, equipment or functionality. Um, the next thing is the cabinets alright and as I, as I mentioned previously there's a channel that goes down the left side and the right side of this thing so you have to accommodate for that and um, this one is sized for the microwave so turn that on and then this one over here is sized for some uh, basically for a set of uh, garment bags or packing cubes that I'll be able to put in here to store my clothes and things and then the top units are just going to be for miscellaneous type stuff okay now one complication over here is the size of this water filter and I may have to abandon a cabinet over here entirely you'll notice that it fits pretty tight in there okay and um, this is going to be something that I'm going to have to look at closely um, the sink let me just show you what the sink looks like here's the sink it looks something like this with the two outlets in back and it's going to be uh, set inside that cabinet and what I want to be able to do is I want to put a water filter located right here now my first thought for that was to get a travel Berkey um, this is the travel Berkey it's fairly pricey for what you get two hundred and fifty dollars and and it's pretty big pretty wide um, that might be a difficulty and so my alternative uh, to this what I found were some 1.4 gallon 5.3 tall paint cans so I'm going to put in two paint cans and um, and then fit them with the spigot and uh, the filters the Berkey filters which I've just which I've um, concluded will fit inside this thing two of them but it's a little bit narrower and a little bit taller than the Berkey filter system. Now the problem with these, of course, is that they, they're not uh, rated for potable water. And so in order to get around that, I will have to line them with uh, open clear plastic poly bags. And this is the right size for that. And these are, um, they meet the specifications for food contact. All right, so if I line those pink cans with this water and then I put my spigot in there, I think that will work for me. So that's what that looks like, and it's a little bit tall, so I may have to do something about that. So essentially, that is what the interior of the design looks like. Um, now, in addition, I have my um, my batteries and inverter down here and let me get and also the uh, the battery electrical rack which I built okay which I'm going to build I mean and um, Let me get rid of this stuff. Now, okay, now one complication here, which I never, I didn't really think about until I had the CAD representation of this, is that you'll notice here, let me get rid of the wheel well, the uh, uh, passenger side wheel well, so you can see better. Um, notice these legs on the bed. And uh, these are actually f uh, feet. Uh, these will probably be wooden feet and there will be sections of it so that I can adjust the elevation of this bed. If I'm in a, a, a you know, location which is not level, I can rem 
I can insert or take out these sort of wafers on the bottom of these feet in order to adjust the height of the bed. That uh, seems like a, and then there, there's a little dowel that will fit down through here, which hold, pins everything together and allows me to um, take those in and out, I think with a minimum of hassle. But the point I was going to make here is that I've got all of these legs on the bed and um, there's no way that I was going to be able to have those legs and the electrical rack in the same location. So what that told me, I, I mean, I design, designed this electrical rack a long time ago, and the electrical rack um, has um, threaded rods that I can tighten down the, uh, the L channel, which clamp the batteries and the inverter, etc. But what I didn't recognize until after I had designed the bed was that I was going to have to beef up these rods because they were going to represent one leg of my st of the stationary portion of the bed. Okay, so at least on this side and this side, those rods are doing double duty. They're uh, allowing me to clamp down my electrical equipment. They're also they also represent a support for two corners of my uh, of the stationary bed. Now remember that this this leg pulls out. You know, this is part of the movable part of the bed. Okay, so, and this this is the perfect reason for, for having the CAD is because I never would have recognized that I, I needed to do this. And I was getting ready to build this entire assembly using uh, rods which are too small. So I would have had to re rebuild a, a good portion of this when I concluded that my rods were going to have to serve double duty. I didn't recognize that until I had the CAD drawing. So, um, you know, all of these things, and and I don't, I don't uh, presume that I've got uh, everything figured out with this CAD drawing. I'm sure that there are going to be lots and lots of complications, but I'm hoping that I can minimize those. You know, the as-built complications. You know, by doing as much work as possible on the um, uh, on the CAD portion of this thing. Now just to just to complete this I'll, I'll show you and I've, I've showed this before but um, let me include the uh, the roof components. Oh actually before I do that let me show you how this is going to relate with a couple of people and let me also demonstrate how I'm going to get a little bit more counter space. So what we've got here is, let me turn this around. We've got a table here on a pole and this table can swivel around in various locations. This is the configuration for two people you know, eating dinner, basically, using this this table. All right. So let me get rid of the two people again and show you a few of the other configurations. Um, let me turn off that table and turn on the table. Okay, so that's one. I could swing it around there and I could swing it around there and I could swing it around there. So it, it gets pretty flexible counter space and that's the whole idea of having this table. So um, you can uh, locate it in various places, you know, for various purposes. Um, turn on the couch again. Right. Okay, so now that's that. And now to round this out, let me start putting on the roof elements. So there's the roof. 
There's the photovoltaic panel and notice that it's going to float above the roof and underneath this photovoltaic panel is going to be storage space because I'll be able to hinge this up, lift it up and the way I hinge it up is I, uh, I create a, uh, a hinged frame for it. This is channel that it can slide in and out of and now the hinged frame is uh, attached to a fixed frame located right there and the fixed frame not only holds the photovoltaic but it also holds the water system right there okay and then this whole complicated thing well wait a minute first I've got a uh, my fan it's going to be a maxi fan located right there and again you know this is placed there are very few places I could actually locate this on the roof so this believe it or not was one big driver of the design basically the location of that maxi fan and then I'll be able to take the whole thing and uh, wrap it in a uh, sheet metal enclosure which I'll paint and try to achieve a little bit of stealth you know by having this and I can eliminate the you know any kind of potential shadows on my PV panel because it's elevated you know flush with the top of the of the uh, roof and again the whole I mean the, ba the basic driver for this whole design the reason I've got a mini cargo van is because this thing has to fit in my garage alright so this whole system is designed to fit inside my garage so anyway, I guess uh, I won't belabor this anymore. I, I, I hope I've convinced you that it's really worthwhile spending the time to create a as detailed of a CAD drawing as you can so that you can really visualize how this is all going to fit together, especially in my case since I'm going to be making this whole thing out of L-channel aluminum. Um, almost all of the structural pieces and um, it's really given me uh, insight. I mean, just the, the act of doing this has given me uh, a lot more familiarity both with the van, um, the body, and, and all of its nooks and crannies and everything else, and, um, and really an appreciation for the size of the equipment that I've got and how it's going to fit together. So with that... Um, I will see you next time.